Hi guys, it's Mandy with Gwen's Foxiness, and I'm here to show you guys how to paint um, the uh, chair. So I've had this for a while and it was actually white and I've painted it the turquoise. So now I'm going to go back to like an old white uh, just to kind of spruce up my um, interior. Um, so I'm going to kind of teach you kind of some of the basics of painting. Um, we're going to do kind of the distress method. Um, but as we're going along, guys, I've been painting for years, uh, furniture for years. So if you guys have questions, if you have questions or comments, just put, put it down below or even send me a private message and I'll, I'll certainly try to answer um, to the best of my knowledge. Um, so when I painted this one, I actually used um, three or four colors. So I don't know if you can see it very well, but I have some of the blue coming out and I have turquoise and white. And so now I'm going to paint it all over again and uh, do it in white. So one thing that you want to think of uh, when you're, before you start painting is you want to prep your surface. And this has been in the house, so I kind of know uh, that it's not that dirty and there's not a lot of buildup on it. So I'm honestly just going to take some Lysol wipes and just wipe it down and make sure there's no just grime or dirt or cobwebs or whatever. Um, but if you have a piece that's been in the family for years, maybe you you know, you've used the um, polishing, polish min wax on it, I don't know. Um, anyway, you know, it has kind of a buildup. You want to use this TSP to get it wiped down and um, before you paint, okay? So that will kind of help if there's like really lots of oil or dirt or something, your paint is not going to adhere as well. So you would want to use the uh, TSP. And today, we're going to use chalk paint that's my favorite and my favorite brand is the Annie Sloan chalk paint now there are tons of brands of chalk paint out there and a lot of them have become really good and comparable to Annie Sloan's um, the reason I use Annie Sloan's is a I know the quality is good I know normally I'm going to only have to put on two coats of whatever project I've worked on um, it doesn't smell so I can paint in the house I I always use the house to paint in. Um, you know, my son's not in love with the odor, but really it's it's a non it's very non-toxic. So if I get on my hands and stuff, I just use soap and water, or even on my floor, I just use soap and water to clean it up. Um, so I, I've fallen in love with just her color selection and the fact that you can really mix, uh, mix the colors to create your own uh, color palette, uh, make it kind of a unique, uh, unique color for you. Um, so that's kind of why I like Annie Sloan. But again, there are tons of chalk paints out there. Um, and really why I like chalk paint is that it's easy. It's like kind of a, a it's not messy and um, you're not, it's easy to clean up. So all my paintbrushes stuff, I just use soap and water. I don't, I'm no chemicals, all that good stuff. So that's really kind of why I sway towards the chalk paint area. Um, side of things when I start painting. So let's just get started. I'm just going to wipe up um, with my Lysol wipe. I've kind of already done the bottom. The one to do the top real quick while you're watching. And um, to kind of see how easy this is. And then I'll um, get this all wiped off. And this is already waxed. So I've put this color on here and waxed it just because it's been in the house for a while. Um, you know, it really depends on what technique that you want to go for. Since I am going to be doing the distressed look, um, I do, I go back and forth on the waxing. And once you, <laughs> waxing between coats, and once you start kind of practicing and finding out what uh, your, your style is and what you know what you like to do um, it's really just an experiment so I um, just experimented a lot with the different um, techniques um, that uh, are available out there and they didn't have to be you know they're not chalk paint techniques they're just painting techniques and um, you know what's best and sometimes I will wax between because I really want um, this color to show through. Sometimes I'm, I want it, I'm okay if it, you know, if it just skips one color, goes back down to the base color. Um, the other thing about chalk paint is like 
since I have this waxed, okay, when I put on the white color, really all I need is a Lysol wipe to do my distressing. Um, and it's really easy and not to have to use a sander and make a big mess. Another reason I can do it in the house. Um, but if you didn't wax it, you can still do the distressed look. You just kind of, you just never know how it's going to come out. Sometimes it goes right through um, the, the co color underneath and goes right down to the base color, uh, which is fine. You know, I, I love that your projects just kind of take a mind of its own. And, um, you know, you kind of you start out with something in your head and then the project kind of takes over and it usually comes out the best. So what I'm going to do, distressing, these are kind of some of the things that I think about. I kind of think about where I want the other, other colors to show up. And normally that's kind of where um, normal use, you know, like what, what, think of an old chair that's, you know, been through the weather, you know, been in a house forever. What, where are the normal tear or wears on it? And that obviously is around the edges. Um, you know, these have little spindles on them, so of course you can bring out the um, different colors to add dimension. Um, in the, the back of the chair here as well. Um, on the legs, anytime I love, I love furniture with legs. Um, anytime you have these legs and stuff, you can really um, make the color pop and bring out uh, more, um, more color, more, more to dimension. And it just kind of gives it, um, you know, some more character. That's why I love legs, is because they kind of add more character to any piece that you're you're doing. So let's just get started. And um, again, chalk paint is easy to use and it lasts forever. So I've had this this jug for probably I don't know two two and a half years, and I haven't used it because I've been traveling. Um, but I, I opened it up and it was perfect. I still use it. I put more, I added more water in it. So if it's too thick, add more water to it. If you get it too runny, um, just set it out on the counter and leave the lid off and it will, um, you know, come back to its normal consistency later. Um, the other thing I like, normally my projects takes two coats, but sometimes they only want like one and a half or one and a quarter. And so you can really water down your paint, which saves you money. So if you guys have any money saving tips on uh, chalk paint, I would love to hear them. Um, but really, um, you know, if it takes one half coats, you could water it down to half and half. So half paint, half water, or sometimes even just a quarter of paint and three quarters of water. It really kind of depends on the consistency you're looking for. And that's something you can just play with and, um, and kind of figure out what your project needs. So I'm just gonna start, um, I'm using um, an Annie Sloan um, paintbrush. Um, I have several of these, these are my favorite uh, brushes. They just do such a good job at covering uh, the area. And this is a large one. I think they have like, a, like two or three different sizes. Um, so I, I did invest a little bit in these just because I was painting so much furniture. Um, that um, it was just, you know, it was more cost effective for me to, to use these, wash them out, and reuse them again. You can kind of tell it's dirty, it's a painter's, it's a painter's brush. Um, I think we kind of um, some tin foil around it um, so it doesn't dry out, and then I'll come back uh, when, this, when this coat's finished. So another thing I like about the chalk paint is that it doesn't take very long to dry so you can work on more projects so when you're you know doing painting furniture for a living uh, obviously your time is money and um, being able to do different projects um, in less time uh, will get you um, you know you'll be able to crank out more projects you'll have a little bit more time to rest in between projects um, so let's just finish this up. I'm going to go ahead and just finish this up for you guys. I'm sure that um, watching the paint, um, you know, watching the paint is not very fun. Um, another reason I like this brush is that it's easy for me to get in between um, these little guys, you know, so you kind of can really um, 
work, work your paint in there and it's not a whole lot of, um, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort basically and it doesn't leave big droplets. Um, so it, uh, I think it's really worth the money um, to buy you, you know, to buy some nice brushes if you are, um, you know, want to do this for a living. Now, if you're just wanting to do one project, um, those little um, sponge brushes are fine. They'll, they'll work just fine, okay? Um, I also want to show you another technique. So I'm going to, this whole thing is going to be um, all white by the time we get back and um, do the little time lapse. Um, but the dry brush technique is something, um, basically, I have very little um, paint on my brush and or no paint on my brush let me just do that so you can also do what this dry brush effect and you know you can do it a little heavier or a little lighter and um, then that still kind of brings the color through so that's just that's another technique um, that you could use on your different piece of furniture so guys let me continue painting and um, I will we'll get back on when I've got it painted Okay, we're back, and I just wanted to kind of show you uh, what the first coat looked like uh, after I got it finished. So you can kind of see most of it is covered up, but we still have just some areas um, that I'll need to go over um, to get a more clean finish. So some of the areas dried real quick, and I was able to go ahead and give it its second coat, uh, but overall, um, I'll need to go back over it uh, one more time and it does look like it needs a one full coat uh, this is kind of the time I kind of adjust to see if maybe I could just do like a half coat or a, a quarter of a coat you know type of deal so um, if I thought that the paint was already really thick um, I would do a half a half paint and half water or half chalk paint and half water um, but right now it's pretty, still pretty thin. Um, so I, I think that I'll, I'll be good with just doing a, another full coat. Um, so I will be back when that is complete. Thank you. Bye. Okay. I've got it all painted and I'm going to get you up close so you can kind of see what the end effect was. And now we're going to start the, uh, the second part that I like to do. So a lot of people like it just like this. They want it to be the plain white and no distressing, and that is perfectly fine. And from here on out, it's more like a personal taste. For me, I just think the distressing is kind of like um, blotting your lipstick. You know, it kind of seals the deal and, and uh, makes it more, more you. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I do, but uh, perfectly fine to stop here and just wax it, okay? So I have a light ball wipe, which since I waxed the, the under layer, um, in theory, I should be able just to take, see, my Lysol wipe and actually do the sanding, which is another big reason I like chalk paint. So you don't really have to, you can do it in your house or you can do it even in your garage, but it doesn't make a big mess. It really is, um, really is that easy. So I could distress it and go all the way through. So if I hadn't had, if I just put in, there's two things I want to talk about. Um, if, if I had just painted the, the turquoise and then the white with no waxing, um, it would have worked as well, but you don't, ha you have more control of it when you wax in between layers. So if I would have done that, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't know um, you know exactly what I was going to get, whether the, the turquoise was going to come back out or the white. So that's kind of one of the advantages of waxing in between layers because you have layers because you have more control. The other thing is, um, if I was going to do the distressing look and I knew that I just wanted the turquoise to pop, but I wanted the mainly the project to be white, I would have just painted the areas that I wanted to pop turquoise. Okay, so that's going to save you time and save you money. Um, so I would have in my head said, okay, I want the, these edges, I want these to pop out, I want this to pop out, I want the sides to pop out, 
And that's, those are the only areas that I would have painted turquoise. I would have left the rest of the project uh, blank and just painted the white over it. Okay, so that's one sa safe, saving tip on resources and money. But since it was already tur turquoise and I wanted to paint it white, um, you know, you just, there's no sanding involved when you use the um, uh, chalk paint. So, um, you know, you just clean your project and you start painting on it. You don't have to sand. Um, another reason I like chalk paint. So can you tell why I love chalk paint? So really, um, to, just to do this project, I would just go around and, you know, start small, um, kind of figure out what you want. Um, if you want a heavier, a distressing look, you go back over it. But at first, just kind of, um, just a little bit, have a little bit of it come out in different areas. Um, and then you can go back and see if you want it done heavier. Um, the other way is obviously to use a sanding block or even a hand sander. Um, if you're doing a larger project, you'll probably want a hand sander um, or, you know, a block or something. But then you can really just kind of rough up the edges. Um, you know, and this does kind of create some dust, so it's probably something that you really want to take outside of your home um, and do. Um, but you can, some people like to see the paintbrush strokes just so they can see that it's handmade. Some people don't. Some people want it to be uh, soft and clean. Um, so you can just go over it with your sander. and get more of a, a soft and clean look. I like to see the paint brushes marks. Um, I think that's just kind of me as a, a painter. Um, you know, you kind of like to see your work. So I'm just gonna kind of work on the top here and then we're gonna wax the top and I'll, I'll kind of tell you um, kind of how I do it. So again, once I get it kind of where I want it, the areas that I want, um, to kind of pop. So I, I like this technique because I think it kind of it gives it more character. It gives it more dimension. It gives it um, its own little personality. Okay? Um, of course, if you wanted the color to pop in, in the middle, you would just kind of sand until you got it um, until it came up. Okay? So I'm just gonna get my dust all gathered up here. And then I'm gonna show you kind of how to wax it. And there's different sealers, like there's some sealers that you can just roll on with a roller. Um, I use the furniture wax, that's kind of how I learned. Um, but there's, if you're gonna do really big projects like your kitchen cabinets or something, um, I think Minwax makes like a, a, you know, a liquid that you would actually roll on. Um, same protection. Um, but it's just kind of easier. It takes a little bit less time, okay? So let me get this gathered up. So hopefully you can see the just distressed look. And once I get the wax on, I'll bring the camera back up so you can see it, okay? So just put that to the side. Again, I'm just gonna use my Lysol wipe here. Clean off the residue before I wax. Guys, if you have questions, feel free to put in there. You know, we if you're liking this project, it's something that you want to see more of, uh, the way you let us know is just by commenting likes or hearts. And, uh, you know, we craft, and you guys uh, let us know how you're liking the project so we can bring you more of them. So, okay. So I'm just going to take and wax now. Kind of see it. I use I use quite a bit of it. It's I had it forever. Honestly, this has lasted me. I, I want to say this is probably I've only bought probably bought two of these um, since I've been what, doing furniture, and I painted a lot of furniture. Okay, so this is a waxing brush, and if you're going to be doing lots of furniture, I, I recommend you doing a waxing brush. If you're going to be doing largest pieces of furniture. I recommend you getting a waxing brush. If you're gonna be doing, um, you know, just this chair or, or just something small like a side table, you don't need a waxing brush. Don't spend the money on it. Just 
you know, take out your cloth and then and then put it on, okay? But the waxing brush kind of helps you kind of get this evenly distributed. And then you can go back with your cloth and add kind of blend it in. And this is just your protection layer. So honestly, um, do you need wax? Wax just kind of helps protect it and seal it so it doesn't get damaged so easily or um, you know, the other thing that could happen would be um, stains, um, you know, if you want to do stains. My outside doors that I painted, I did not wax because um, the, it just almost is like the heat is almost kind of like a, seal, a sealant uh, with, um, with the, the Andy Sloan chalk paint. So what I did was just took some excess and put it back in the jar, okay? And then, basically guys, it's sticky when you put it on. So you just rub it in until you get, until it's not sticky anymore, okay? And you'll get some areas like that. Let me move this around. That you will, um, you know, just work on. Work on it just a little bit. Okay. Let me get you another close up. I, I'm going to do the rest of the video, but um, honestly, it takes a little while, so I don't want you to sit here and watch it. But And we're also going to do something extra special with this one, but I want to show you how that turned out. See the distressing on it? So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the chair and I'll be back to show you uh, the finished project. Okay, 